I just go through and just give you a quick little summary here, but um, just going to talk a little bit about basically putting together a pressure based off four of our stunts that we can run um, and just kind of summarize that, how we teach it, the method of what we do, and, and then some clips that we'll show to kind of go through that and, and really how you can build bringing five off of a, really off of a four-man concept um, is really what I'm kind of looking at here in, in, in a piece of what we do. So um, really as us, as we go and in, in, in our defense, um, really what we look at is just four things for our guys that we're really going to talk about with our black shirt code is we tell our guys be prepared, play fast, play physical and finish. And, and really as a coach, we want to make sure that we're giving them the tools and, and not making them think out there, um, giving them those techniques and those things that we really want to rep through. So just to kind of lay the groundwork, we're a base three, four um, split coverage, uh, come out of a two high shell and, and do a lot of different things. I'm not really going to touch on, the back row coverage of this, um, but I can talk a little bit if there's questions about it afterwards or even during um, how coverage ties into the things that we're doing. But um, really, I want to just focus up on the front. A couple things and just how we do it in setting our strength. We're still a little old school, so we're going to set our strength to the run strength. So we really look at tight ends, uh, setting our strength to the tight end and and uh, if no tight ends or two tight ends, we're going to go to the pass strength and then to the field and the QB arm. And, and really, that's how we're going to set everything up front for us. Um, the pressures here and what we're going to look at, um, we call pressures. So in our, in our system, our base and our 3-4 is bringing four. Sometimes we'll bring three and drop eight. Um, it's just very situational dependent. Um, but a majority of the time, we're bringing four. We call pressures bringing five and blitzes bringing six or more. Um, and so really what we're going to look on these pressures is they can be based off formations, fielder boundary, or certain keys, such as bringing a pressure to a back, away from a back, uh, those types of things. And so that's really how this is built and, and structured. Uh, concepts, really how we want to teach it, and probably just like all of you out there, is, is just how you want to streamline it and make sure that uh, these kids understand it. I think one of the things I've learned over the years is we stare at this, we watch film, we study it, we look at it all the time. These kids don't. So a lot of times we expect them to know as much as us and, and get that, but it's really on us to, and how we teach it. So uh, we, we really want our guys to understand the why of, of the call and what we're doing with it. And for them, they hear it, they got to see it. We rep it on the field um, when they do it. And then we really work on coming back in and, and our guys do a good job of, uh, when we get back into our position meetings, reteaching uh, the young guys. And I make them get on the board and, and do that. And rather than just listening to me and as I say it, death by PowerPoint and, and, um, and that. Um, one of the things I've got in there, I just talk about their AAT. That's just a buzzword for us that we talk with our guys to know your alignment assignment technique. Three keys before every snap, you know. Get your alignment, your assignment, your technique, and the rest of it is, um, you know, you're going to play ball. So, and the things that we're doing in this, um, in this package is really stuff that we're going to incorporate in every day in our drill work. It's your technique from your D lineman to your linebackers. Um, it's the technique, footwork, um, from running stunts, um, teaching their eyes, where's their key. And then we use what we call just a racehorse mentality or racehorse philosophy and when we rep things, you know, we want to teach it, we want to coach it, but we don't want to stop the drill and spend five minutes talking about it and losing reps. So we got to use buzzwords um, and really rep them, film it and teach them on the fly. If somebody's really not getting it, we're going to pull them out, keep the reps going and then, um, and then try to just to get everybody up to speed so that we can get reps and really work on the technique and, and those things that we want to on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, the four stunts, and, the, and these terms are just the terms that we use and some, some older terms that we have on, on stunts, but really what I'm going to do is give you, I'm going to give you four stunts um, that we call our wham stunt, sink it stunt, cuff, and willy. Um, the wham and sink it are outside linebacker stunts. The cuff and willy are inside linebacker stunts, and the inside backer can also give a sink it call and run it. That's kind of a duel. And then I'm going to just talk about... Um, or I'm going to go back. I'm just going to talk about four pressures 
variations using these four stumps that they're already going to know and and that we rep from from day one install um, of things that they're going to do up front so when i talk stumps really we talk that triangle we talk about in r34 that dn that outside backer and that inside backer those three guys really got to be on the same page because we're gap responsible so if whatever stunt we're doing if we're doing what we call our non-knife stunts you know we're all got a gap responsibility b gap c gap a gap um, but if we've got some type of knife or twist stunt or movement um, they've all got to understand and know where each guy is is going to be at and where they're supposed to be and how to fit up off of them so we really talk about that triangle and, and communicating and, and being on the same page there so we can play off of each other so the first one I'm just going to talk about here um, and just show you is what we call our wham um, it's an outside linebacker in the d end um, our alignment on this with the d end we've tilted him a little bit he's he's basically a five shade um, we've widened him sometimes a little bit game dependent or, or technique wise what the guy can do we don't want to make it a tell and just give it away that every time we get into a tilt that we're we're running this um, also knowing which linebackers is what we call on when I say a linebackers on means he's given a stunt call and he's a rush he's a rush outside linebacker so obviously in our three four we can bring any of the four linebackers um, just on game plan and, and formation and what we want to do um, but this D end is going to line up in a tilted five um, he's really got a bull rush technique on that O tackle um, if you want to talk about a, a pass set um, when that when that O tackle is going to kick back and, and set that pass set we want that D end to aim right for the chest of that O tackle and, and have that bull rush technique right into him. And then what he's going to do is he's going to snap back underneath on a pass set into the B gap as he fans out. And as he does that, that outside backer um, is going to be on his outside edge. So our outside backer, um, now when I say walked, we really look at our alignments of our outside backers are really some formation dependent. Is two displaced or is it a single receiver side? Um, but our outside backer just in by base rule is going to be in a walked alignment. Um, we have some terminology. We give both our inside and outside linebackers that we can give some simulations and some, some bluffing and, and different things. But basically on their alignment, when they're running a stunt, um, they can be in a sit, which is their base alignment in this, in this case walked. Um, they can be in a slow where they're going to really try to time it up in the, in the snap of that QB to hit it coming off the edge or their show. They're going to be up at the heels and, and they're showing that they're coming and, and really game planning. We're going, to, we're going to give them those three options of really what we want to do. Um, so really in this way, um, that DN is going to be a B gap and he's going to snap underneath and that outside backer is going to come right off his edge. He's a contained edge guy. He's going to work off the D end and he can work his disguise off of that. If you get a run set off of this with a down block by that tackle, um, that DN is going to come tight off of him. And, and just be squeezed down um, based upon his block. Next stunt, um, and just so everybody knows, I've got the film is at the end. So I'm gonna go through the film and we'll walk through these stunts and show you the clips of what we're running with, with these stunts. So um, the next one that we're, we go through here in our sink it, um, sink it's more of a, what we call our knife movement and our twist. Um, we've got the nose incorporated in this one and the D end we're going to get into, I've got listed here as a four shade. Um, sometimes we'll tell our guys you're going to ability align uh, based upon what his responsibility is, but we can really set the front to however we want. He can be in a five shade, four shade. Um, we've been in a four eye and then I've got a clip where we've even been down into a three, but if we're in a three, we're going to really run this stunt one man over. Um, over the center in the guard rather than the guard and the tackle here right now. Um, but the D end in this, what he's going to do is he's basically what we use the term the penetrator. Um, his aim point's going to be at the uh, ear hole, that old guard. Um, and his job is really, he's going to come down, he's going to be a collision and ricochet is the term that we give, give him. If that guard fans out or blocks out at him, he's going to cross face um, and rip through him. And then once he crosses, get vertical. If that guard is down, he's going to come tight off of his rear and, and squeeze down. Um, our nose guard, he's, he's our looper. Um, one of the big things that we tell our guys in our, in our key is some of these key terms that we use. We use the term PPG for him, press, pop, and go. 
And the big thing there is with that, what that PPG stands for in press, pop, and go is he wants to give that jab step to the opposite A gap, not a big long step or overextend, um, but really what we're trying to do is force that center to honor us. And, and we're going to give that step. And so we want to press him, give a pop. Once that DN comes and clears us, we're going to go right off his tail and loop right behind him. And, and obviously based upon what the block is and the runs, we get play two. Um, we're going to keep our hat in the gap and we get anything away. We're going to work off that DN to first daylight and, and clear it and get vertical. And then with this stunt, this can be run by an outside backer or an inside backer. So in this case, it's the outside backer. He's just the edge rush. So he's going to be off the edge. We're running a twist with the nose in the end on the inside, and he's going to be an edge. Um, the biggest difference or the only difference here is if we run it with the inside, he becomes the edge. Uh, otherwise, everything is the same for the sink it. So this is a stunt that the inside or the outside can run. Um, that linebacker is just going to be the edge. He's going to set the edge on this. This is a little adjustment if we want to get into a three tech with our D end and a one shade away, get into a reduction front. So we'll run this under our over and under fronts. And now we're just going to basically move one man over. Um, so that D end now is going to ear hole to the center. And, and if he gets face to him, he's going to cross it in vertical rather than before we were ear holing on the guard. So we just move one gap in. We still get a twist off of a reduction front. Um, so for us, we, we really look at, we can give this in a few different looks from different shades. Zero up our nose, um, shade him, and our D end, we can get into a five, a four, a four I, or a three, and based upon our different alignments and fronts that we want to get into, we can still run this stunt. Um, it's, it's pretty multiple that way, and we're getting the same action that we want to. Technique is still the same. Again, we're just moving one guy over. Our nose guys is still got his PPG. Press, pop, and go. He's going to let that DN come down and collision the center. Then he's going to work right off his tail. We talk, we talk scrape paint, get vertical, and, and work right to vertical to daylight right off of that. And the DN is, is again, he's, he's a collision and ricochet. Um, unless he gets face or anything coming at him um, from a pass set, he's going to cross face. So we like this a little bit, uh, especially with the three tech. You know, if you're going to get offenses that are going to set their protection to the three shade, um, you know, we're, we're going to do some things. Um, but we like this sink it here. If, it's, if we get slide protection away from us, obviously Bob is our big on big man protection. But if we get slide away, um, we just feel this is going to open up for us and, and get that slide. And if that uh, guard's going to stay with the end, the nose is going to come clean. Or if he doesn't, if he, um, if he picks up the nose, that, that DN's going to backdoor it right off that center as they, as they, as they protect and, and slide away from us on this. What we also build in with a lot of our stuff is we can give a switch call in this. And really all a switch does is tells who goes first. Okay? So in this case, it's just the opposite. The, uh, the nose guards the penetrator now. Um, he's going to tighten up his alignment a little bit. He's going to cross that center, aim right for the guard's ear hole. And, and if he gets face or anything, he can, he can cross face. Otherwise, he's going to collision that. And that D end is going to be the looper. So he's going to PPG, press, pop, and go. And now he's going to bring that loop back. Um, so we can mix this up. We can give a sink it call or we can give a sink it switch. And it just changes. The edge rusher, outside backer, inside backer, same for him, nothing changes. He, he doesn't worry about if it's a switch or not um, because he's gonna set the edge and work off the edge. Um, this is one out of our reduction front, especially if we're down into a three. Um, we like it with any slide two. So if we, if we get any change up in the protection, um, we, can, we can change this up and, and really try to beat some of that slide protection that we might get off of a pass set set to us. All right, the third one. And we can go back to these. I know I'm kind of running through these, but if we got questions, we can kind of go back and, and look at the stunts after film. But um, now going to, to the two inside backer stunts um, that we're going to run as well is one we call our cuff. Um, it's an inside back. Um, in a cuff, we're going to get that DN down into a three or a four I. Basically, he's a B gap player. And we really want to force that guard and that tackle 
um, especially if they're going to set protection, different things. And our um, nose, we communicate with the nose. I talked about the triangle, the inside, outside, and DN. Um, but we also, that DN, we communicate that nose hears the call. So he understands, especially on a pass rush, if you think about it, when you bring four, you want to set that pocket. So you got those two inside guys that are going to put pressure to the feet of the QB, and you got the two guys that are setting the edge um, on just that square cup that we want to force that pocket. And so that nose, he understands that he's got to work away from the call on a pass set. And because we're going to, he's going to be to the feet away from the stunt. Our inside backer in this, um, we can go into a couple things. I'm, what, what you'll see on film from us is a lot of times we're going to be in a show, um, which is we're going to line up, we're going to attack the inside shoulder of that O guard. We work our footwork on here. Um, I've got this listed out. Our outside foot is up. Okay, and we want to step and attack that, that guard with our inside foot. Um, the easiest way I teach our guys that they kind of get it, everybody's going to learn a little different, but when they talk about understanding, do I got to think about what foot I got to put up? All we tell them is the direction you're looping, that foot's up. So we want to be efficient in our steps. We want to take one step, attack step with that inside foot, and minute we get past, we're going to stick it, and we're going to work right up to that outside edge. That way we're not wasting steps or getting crossed up. Um, so we talk a lot about our footwork, and then obviously our eyes. Where are we keying? That inside shoulder of that guard. Um, if we get run, our guy, we, and, and we can sit right in that A gap, and we're not going to get out of it. But if we get past set or anything outside, he's going to work to that outside edge. We get run away. Um, we talk about he can stay in if it's a fast flow or slow flow. Is he going to keep that nose in, the, or is he going to keep his, his hat in that A gap, um, or is he going to loop back out to that edge? Uh, really where that loop out to the edge really helps is obviously setting the edge, the pass rush um, when we get to that edge. If we get anything fast flow away, um, he's going to keep his, his hat in that, um, in that A gap. Um, unless we get a team that, that runs a lot of reverses and, and going to catch us, we're going to work on what we call our bar boot and reverse guy, who's really going to be that guy that's got to set that edge and make sure we don't get reverses and those things on us. So he's an edge setter. Um, this is a stunt put on. It does put our DN down into a three and a four I um, because we want to, we want to uh, give this look and he's that DN is going to be a B gap player. And the other one I'm going to show you is what we just call our Willie. Um, our DN is going to be in a, in a five tech. Um, he can widen it a little bit. Reason we want to wide it, we won't want to get so pinched, so tight in there. Um, especially if this is run off a pass down. Um, what we want to do really is uh, make sure we get a little space and run a game, um, secondary movement game with our inside backer and our DN. And off this, our nose understands the call on a pass set. He's going to work away from the call. Um, on a run set, we're going to play our block. And we basically, we've got our inside backers, the B gap responsibility, the DNs, the C gap responsibility. Uh, if we get a, when we get a pass set off of this, um, that's where we're going to make our secondary twist movement by our DN. So the key part here and the important part for our inside backer, again, if we're in a show alignment, we can show it, we can slow it, which we're going to time up. What we don't do is come from depth off this one. It just takes too long to develop with that DN. Um, but if we're in a show, which our heels, our toes are going to be right at the heels of that DN, okay, um, we're going to put our gap foot up, and which is in our B gap, and we want to step with that inside foot, okay. So we're going we're gonna to keep that footwork, step with that inside foot. And if we get past that both, that inside backer is going to push vertical through that B, gate, B gap. You're going to see a few clips where we actually went and chipped the tackle. Um, some of our guys got a little too over ambitious with us and chased the tackle a little too wide. But ultimately, he is going to be the contained through B gap guy, and we, especially if we get a pass set. So if the guard, we want him. To, to kick and take that inside backer. We want that tackle to kick. That DN's going to push vertical. We want him, he's got to sell it. He's got to push up the field. Um, we don't tell him take three steps, take four steps. What we tell him is you got to push vertical to honor. Once that inside backer clears you, you are going to do what we call our psycho movement. You're going to snap back underneath that inside backer. So 
if that guard, now we've got that guard in a, in a, we put him in conflict. Um, is he going to, is he going to keep that inside backer or step off and take that DN? And if he does, what we tell our inside backer is now once you get vertical, if you're clear, you're going to basically ricochet and bonus back in um, into the pocket. So and you'll see that on the clips that, that I'll run here and, and kind of walk through. So that's our, that's our Willie stump. So really the basis is taking those four stunts for us that are just four base stunts that we can run with our inside and outside backer um, based upon the game plan for that week. Again, it could be based upon formation, backfield set. We want to bring it to the field, away from the field. Now that's really up to you. But these are just four base stunts that we have for our 3-4 defense with our linebackers that we run. Um, so what we're going to package them in is we just call it tool check. Obviously, you can name it what you want. Um, everything that I do um, and, and how we build our stuff, I should say I don't do it, but our staff does and our defensive staff. Um, we really want to build it off building blocks so that the terminology is understandable for the kids. So we really package it up in certain things. So you'll understand when I say tool check pressures, you're going to see the verbiage that we use and these kids understand um, what pressure we're bringing and, and what it means to each of them. So in our tool check, um, we have what we just call our hammer, nail, wrench, and bolt call. And really what we're saying is this pressure, if it's a hammer call, that means we're bringing it to the strength. And again, how we set the strength is to the tight end. Um, if there's no tight end or two tight ends, then we're going to look at the pass strength. And if it's a balanced pass strength, we're going to look at the field. And as all of you know, there's very rare times in a full game that that ball is going to be set straight in the middle of the field. Um, outside of a kickoff and, and, and setting it. Um, but we tell our guys, if it so happens to get set there, make that call if it's a field boundary call. But we can set it to the strength with a hammer call. We can set it to nail with a weak side call. Um, wrench is just going to be to the field. Doesn't matter what the formation or the strength is. And bolt is setting it to the boundary. And when we say we set it, we're going to bring five. So really what a tool check pressure is, Tool check pressure, sorry about that bouncing back and forth, but tool check pressure, it's a balanced pressure. So this package is a little different than we're, when we're going to um, overload an edge or overload a side when we want to get numbers. We have our edge pressures that we're going to attack an edge. We have our inside pressures where we're going to attack guards and center with two and try to, try to beat them with numbers. These pressures that I'm going through are really what we call our balance pressures. We're going to bring an outside backer from one side and an opposite inside backer from the other side. And they're gonna run one of those four stunts that we just went through. When we set which side the pressure comes from, it is always set to our outside linebacker. So if it's hammer, it's a strong side, it's our strong side outside linebacker that is on, and it's our weak side inside backer it's on. If it's nail, it's our weak side outside, and it's our strong side inside. Wrench, again, field boundary, bolt, it's boundary. Okay, wrench and bolt, so it doesn't matter. But just so that's how we set everything. And really how that's going to tie into is also the coverage and things behind. But that way our guys understand um, it's all set by that outside backer to which side. So in the first one here, we'll talk just briefly about hammer, strong side. Again, that's our strong side outside backer and our weak side inside linebacker. Not going to go through all this verbiage on here, but if we obviously if we share this out and that you want to take a look at this and, and watch, you've got these slides that you that we can, I'll share share with you guys. I know this is being recorded, but if guys want the PowerPoint, that's perfectly fine. Um, but in our hammer, it's strong side outside, weak side inside. Okay, so this is what that looks like just from a base um, when we look at what we just call a pro formation uh, two back. Um, our stud is our outside backer to the strong side and our will inside backer is on. So that's hammer. Nail, it's just the opposite. It's weak side outside's on and our strong side inside is on and they'll give the stunt calls to each side. So just like we talk about with our secondary when we talk split field coverage, when we look at these pressures that are balanced out of our tool check, we're really splitting this formation in half. That Zeke and the weak side outside backer in this nail, um, weak side, he's giving a stunt call that's going to be between the triangle of the Zeke, D end, and that will inside backer in the nose. They understand what's happening on their half. The Sam, which is our strong side inside backer, he's got a stunt call on his side. 
And we blend these calls so that they don't contradict each other. And really our number one rule is, obviously only one side gets to use the nose in a twist game call. And so when we name the verbiage of our calls and I'll go through those kind of just why we name them the way we do, the kids understand, are they playing with the nose or not? And we tell them we can't split the nose and play both sides of the ball, obviously. And so it creates less confusion to, under, to understand whose side of the ball is running what stunt or side of the split. And then again, wrench and bolt, just field boundary. So, so we take all of that, and it seems like a lot sometimes, but we just break it down to the basics for, for the kids and just talk about, we're talking about stunts. It's things that they run from day one to their side. Now we're just running two of them. So the four pressures that I'm just gonna go through and show you, four of them that we've run in the past. Um, the first one is wash. And again, you can name them whatever you want, however the kids. To be honest, a lot of times I come up with a name, I think I'm pretty brilliant and it sounds neat, has some meaning to me and I go ask the kids and they kind of look at me cross-eyed. And then I'll ask them, what do you want to call it? And we get a system that just really fits in because they're the ones that got to call it on the field and understand what they're going to do. So wash, really, again, we take those four stunts. So in wash, that outside's got a wham, the first letter in that word, and then sink it is the inside on the opposite side. So when they hear wash, that outside knows I've got a wham, the inside's got to sink it. Um, so what we'll go through wash, scuff, we're gonna run the combination of a sink it by the outside and a cuff by the opposite inside. And then wacko is a wham by the outside and a cuff by the opposite inside. And a swill is a sink it by the outside and a willy by the opposite inside. I, I said, it says outside backer there, that's inside. That's a typo on my part, um, typing that too fast. So really we can take, and there's obviously a lot more combinations you can do. Um, but these are the four that we've run and, and based upon why we're running them and what we're trying to attack, it gives us a little ability to um, get some movement up front and put some pressure um, and still play some of our base coverage behind and, and some things. So wash, the first one out of this formation. In wash, again, it's a wham and a sink it. So you're going to see on the left side, our um, in wash, our outside backers running the wham, and on the right, our wheel inside backer is going to run a sink it call with that nose and that D end. And then obviously our studs in coverage and a pass set. And so we've got our coverage to each side of what we're going to run. But really, if you just focus up on the front, we've got we've taken those two stunts out of our base four man and run one to each side, and we can run run this based upon what the game plan and, and what they're doing. So wash is really just getting this combination of a wham and a sink it. Bear with me here, I'm gonna turn the, I'm gonna change this from just giving us the, all right, I'm gonna go back here. So we just got the view that we want. So on this first one in our wash, again, we've got a wham to the left and a sink it to the right. So in our protection, you'll see a little bit our D end um, he's gotten a little wider five and, and in a tilt, um, down and distance dependent, just depends how you want your technique of your guys to work, but based out of our three, four. So you're going to see here at 55, he's coming in and he's snapping inside the B gap. So you see that right here. And, and I know sometimes the film gets a little slow and choppy as you go through this, but um, as we go through, and if we just look at this left side, we're getting a high kick. We've got him snapping under, he's the B gap, and he's the edge rush, okay? If we go over, look on the right side, we're gonna run a sink it off this side. So here, we're gonna get this arrow down, okay? He's gonna PPG, and he's gonna loop off, and then our inside backer right here, he's gonna turn, he's gonna become that edge rush off this one. I'm just going to slow this a little bit. You're going to watch that twist on the right. So here what we're getting is we're getting a, what we just call a fan man. We're getting zone slide protection this way. We're getting man on this side and the back stepping to pick up B gap to edge. So we're getting a slide protection here 
So we just call this fan man, whatever terminology you use, but we're getting a zone and, and slide protection on this half and we're getting a man on this side. So with that slide, you'll see we're getting, we want 58 a little bit more to make him honor so that center doesn't turn too fast, but 56 crossing face, okay? And then he's ricocheting and getting vertical. Okay. We'll get another view of it from the, the offensive side. Again, you've got a wham here. He's going to come straight, attack right at, at the chest of that tackle, snap in, and we want this, this outside backer coming off his edge. And you're going to see this twist by the nose and the D end here on the left side in our sink it. Our inside backer on this side, um, his footwork's not right. He's, he's gotten a little lazy on it. We're really, when I talk about our footwork, you see him crossing back. We want, just to go back to that, and actually this one we break out, this one's on me because I coach the inside backers um, when we break out, but we want the opposite of his foot. The reason we want that is we want this inside foot, the snap, minute he reads this in key, you see where his feet are all messed up, they're jacked up right here. If he's got his, his loop side or his outside foot up, he jabs with this inside, Many sees it, he can stick it and he's gonna work to the edge and be a lot more efficient on getting vertical. He's kind of um, a little lazy on his footwork pushing there. So, so we work that. Here on the next one, um, we're gonna look at this again. Now, you can do what you want where you're gonna come, come stem it. You wanna give a show, we talk about show bluff. Um, we'll tie that in so, so not to give them a key of who's on and, and where the stunt's coming from. Um, so you see right here, 48s, he's just bluffing it, trying to give him a look like he's coming. We're running the wham to this side. He's going to aim right, come right at that O tackle. And then our outside's going to come off the edge. Um, and then on this side, this inside 59, he's running, he's running the sink it. So we're going to get a twist by this D end and this nose. I'm going to run at full speed, then I'll come back and if we just start off one side, we start to look at the wham stunt right here. You see he's coming in, he's getting that face. We want him ricocheting right in and he's here. And if they bring that, that back to that side and pick him up, that's fine. We got to beat a block. Okay. So we got the wham stunt on that side. And then on this side, we've got the sink it. So you're going to see this arrow by this DN coming down and the PPG by the nose that's going to step here and loop as he's coming down. He's going to clear first right there. And you'll see that nose come clean. And that's really what we want to see. We want to create some, some confusion. Give them a look. Okay. Now our inside backer, he's got his feet right and better. Um, you see we get that one step. It's not really a read step, but it, it helps us diagnose. And then you'll see him stick and go right to that edge. And again, we've got this guy in conflict. If they're going to put the back the other way, if he doesn't step in and slide to protect him, we've got the inside coming off the edge clean. Or as he picks him up here, we've got this nose coming clean. And again, our just feeling on is if this back steps to this side, now we've put this guy in conflict with our wham stump on the opposite side. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Here's another one from uh, a different look. Again, on the left, we've got a wham. He's going to bring that straight, coming right at that tackle. And we've got an outside backer coming off the edge. Okay. And then to the opposite side with our sink it, we've got this twist coming with these two here. This nose is the PPG, going to loop. And our inside backer now, he's going to be the edge guy. So 
I'm just going to go back on this one. Even off a run, we're fine. Sometimes we'll get the question, when do you run sync it? Why do you run it? We're fine running it. Um, Again, zone, inside zone, even the zone reads, some of those things with the zone blocking. So stump not really as great against power, the gap block down. Um, we can get pinned a little bit. Um, so it's something that we don't run a ton in, in, our, in the power games if we see. Um, I like it during pass and I do like it during zone blocking because we can pop a guy free based upon the zone blocks. So again, really what we look for, like our nose right here, he's getting doubled by that guard in that center. And really, we've got that clear. We're stepping, inside backers coming over off his read. Ideally, we'd like that center to, to pop off him quicker, but we're bonus right into the gap, and we've added numbers back into that side based upon the blocks that we're getting in the stunts. Okay, here's that same play from the opposite angle. You're going to get a sink it off this left side and a wham off this side. Be a little quicker, but what you'll see with off this side right here, when we get this block um, by that tackle, even if it's not a pass, you're going to see as he goes down inside and he's pulling. Okay, we've got a um, we've got a tackle pull off this side with that with that H back that off. He's going to come tight down, squeeze, and you see how he tries to rip back inside of that guard, that, that back block by this guard. So with this wham, he can just snap right back inside and be right into that gap. Okay. So next one is, is what we call our scuff. That's just a combination of a sink it and a cuff. So the first word is the outside backer. We're running the sink it with an outside. And the only difference than the one we showed before with sync it is the outside's the edge. And then we're going to run that cuff stunt with the inside to the opposite side. So we've got the twist with the nose and the D end to the sync it side. We're going to slide our D end down into a three or a four I, and we're going to run this cuff stunt off of this other side. So here we'll look from the defense perspective. What you're going to see off this one is off the left, we're going to have a sink it. So 42 off the left here, he's going to be the edge. Okay, we're going to run this twist game by this D end and this nose. And then you'll see 47 in the D end here, he's running the cuff. And we'll kind of, I'll kind of step through each of these um, as we go. Um, just kind of going left to right. You'll see our sink it stunt that we showed at the other one. And you'll see how we're getting this movement, now 56. As he comes down, get that base, we want him completely, we want him keep working, cross face, and then get vertical, okay? 53 is PPG, and then he's coming off his rear, right to that edge, and we're getting our outside backer coming off the edge here. So once we get this tackle right here, this arrow in, he kind of steps, and then he can't recover to get 42 off the edge. Okay, so when we look at the, at the stunt to this side, he's coming clean right off to the blind side to the QB as he turns to throw. Again, one of the things that's nice, and this is a good stunt, especially if you get lines that are going to set and slide protection towards the three shade here. Okay, so if you remember when I looked at some of that, when I talked earlier on some of that with this sink it, we get slide away. Now we're going to get this loop action back and it opens things up for the sink it. So one of the things that, that this pressure does is, based upon the combination of the stunts that you can do, this will open up one side for you. You know, it's, I'd love to say that it's, it's something we want everybody coming clean, but uh, what we're trying to do is, is really, um, at a time when you're not just gonna overwhelm numbers, you're gonna use your twist game to try to open some things up. So if we take a look at this side here, we're 47, one of the things I want to show with our cuff, just like we had before, you'll see his footwork here. So really what we talked about is footwork. You see he gets, he's a little hesitant, but he gets that one, and then we can come tight right off this edge, okay? So 52 is a B gap. If we're getting slide this way, we want him just pressing vertical. He's got this open. Keep pressing B gap because he knows 47 is coming off his edge, okay?
but we get that just both coming clear. We'll look from the opposite angle here. We'll look at from the opposite end, same thing. We've got to sink it to this side, okay? So if we go through this one, you're gonna see the twist game coming off the edge. And then this is our cuff movement by our inside right here. Okay. All right, here's the next one. Scuff again. Outside backer is gonna run a sink it, and the inside is gonna run a cuff. So our outside off the screen here to our right. Um, offensive right, he's coming off the edge, and we're running a cuff by your inside here. Now, again, different game plans. We'd like 48, step up, bluff it, give them some looks so they don't kind of figure out who's coming. But right now, when we look at this, in our base bringing four, this could be where just this linebacker's on, our inside backer is on, but we're now combining it and bringing this outside off the opposite edge. So, again, we'll just kind of take a look here. Um, Let's start with the cuff here on the left. See him just working the edge. We've, we've got a two man. They work their slide protection to our three technique. Okay. So, really, what we want to do if we're getting that slide based upon setting it to this three, 56 here, we'd probably look at tightening him up a little bit. We want him coming down right here, getting vertical, and our nose is going to again PPG loop right off of him. And then we've got an edge rush coming off this outside edge as well. So 56, you see it clear. We want him to, we want him to rip right now. You'll see this opening where he needs to go. Our nose gets caught up. He PPGs a little too long. We really want him clearing because then we have what we want. If you look, if we can get this guy cleared and PPG quicker and he coming and this D end crossing face, now we've got our three on two matchup because they slid protection this way. Okay, here's from the other angle. So again, you're gonna see where we want, this is how we want this to fit up. We want him to keep working. 53 gets too vertical, but we want him to just a PPG and clear. We want to force this guard to slide. Again, if we can get based upon this, this stunt and this alignment, right now we want him to slide. We want him to slide. Okay. He's sliding here. And that way we should get this clean. And then the key is for him to come right off that edge. Okay. Just get rid of those. And again, the premise of this is these are just two base stunts that our linebackers will run. And we're just combining them to get the effects that we want. Here's another one with the scuff. Um, same thing. Now we're getting a show and a bluff. This is a good job by both inside backers. Right now, 59's bluffing because he's got the sink it, the outside does, and we've got a cuff off this side. So if we look from left to right, you're going to see that twist movement by the D end and the nose here. And, and again, a little quicker, see him, we want him coming clean. Now they swipe the back off back to this side. And we're going to work our inside backer on the other side to try to come clean. Okay. Here's from the other angle. Okay, it's so another one, not a great film, just in, on the road. This is a team we, we're stuck outside in the parking lot on the, on the visitor's end zone film, but this shows a good, it's a good clip here. What's gonna come clean. Again, we've got a cuff on this right side and a sink it off to the left. So 95, our DN's gonna be the arrow, okay? We're gonna PPG with the nose, coming clean. And our outside to this side is coming off the edge here. And then we've got the cuff with our inside backer off this side. So 
So again, you kind of come back. If we look off to the left side, you're going to see the PPG by our nose right here, our D end. We want him collisioning. Remember, it's a collision ricochet, but we really want him working and collisioning back to here. And you see where our nose, he's looping. He's coming clean off this side. You look to the back, 59's got better footwork here. You see him one step and he's off the edge. Now we get a one-on-one -on -one with the back and our DN's just in there. He's just beating a block, working ourselves through, okay? So that was, that was scuff, wacko. Now it's a combination of the wham and the cuff. So you've already seen wham, you've already seen cuff. Now we've combined those two, those two same stunts. So it looks like we've got a whole nother pressure but the guys aren't learning anything new. The outsides and DNs, they already have run a wham before and the inside and the DN have already run a cuff. So this one we just tag in and wacko. As you can see, we got a wham to the left. Little, we've tilted and widened our five a little bit. He's gonna aim right for the chest of him. We got a bluff by our inside backer and our inside backer off this side and he's run the cuff, okay? So you see a good job by our wham here, 98. He just keeps working. He knows he can work, okay? And get right inside. Now Cuff, 59 here, he went rogue on me on this one. He's gotta stay, he's the edge. Remember, he's the B gap right here, okay? And nose, now in this one, the nose really isn't playing with each anybody on each side. He doesn't have a twist. so. So he's balanced up. What we tell him is we've got a stunt off this side, we've got a stunt off this side. He's a two A gap each side. He just balances up. He doesn't have to work away from a stunt one way or the other. Um, he's just got the balanced up right in the middle. And 59 here, if he actually stays and does his job because of what our D end is doing here, if he works to that edge, it's like bird hunting. He's gonna get that quarterback flushed right out to him for an easy sack. He goes rogue comes back inside, but you see here, if he stays to this outside, okay, see where that quarterback's gonna end up. So let's look from the other angle. Okay. And then the next one here, swill. Okay, we got a sink it by the outside and a willy by the inside. So the only new one here is a willy and, and sink it's been done, but a willy is just our B gap by our inside backer and we're gonna cycle movement back underneath him by the DN. So here's what this one looks like. You've seen the sink it to the right here, but here's what our willy, okay? Now we're gonna change our footwork just because again, we wanna attack step and get vertical. Um, he kind of does it over a little bit. We chip this game just on some things, whether you want to chip that tackle if he gets real wide, but sometimes we've chased him a little too wide. Um, but you're going to see right here how he goes. We're pressing vertical, and now what we've done is, and this kind of gets jumbled quick here, we, we blew coverage on the backside, but he's pressing vertical, and right here when he clears, we want this D end cycling, snapping back inside of him, okay? Because what we've done back here with the center, with our twist movement, we've worked him away. So now really what we're doing is we got a two on two, but we're trying to get the advantage to us by playing this little psycho movement back. How far will he? Okay, so here it is from another clip, same thing. We got a Willie on the left side. He's gonna press vertical. Now I tell him if he goes that wide, okay, if he goes that wide, like right here, he shouldn't chase. He just gets vertical and ricochets in, and then he's gonna come right underneath him because this guy bailed out. Um, so this should have been way too easy, um, but he was so ingrained on, he's gonna come out and chip, but you see where we come clean. I think you get the premise of what the stunt should look like, really when that DN snaps back under, underneath him, okay? And at the same time, we've run this twist movement game right back here. So we have bring in our five and we're opening up gaps based upon our movements up front. Here it is off another clip. Again, we can bluff it off this side to, so that we don't give it away where we're coming from. 
but you're going to see our Willie stunt off this side in vertical and chipping, and then you see how he ricocheted back in. 95, we want him to be a little quicker to snap back underneath. That's the premise of what this Willie stunt is. And again, we talk about our eyes. You see where his eyes. He's keying this guard right here. If this guard goes down, okay, he's going to stay right in the B gap for a run fit. He's a C gap player. Okay. So his keys, we got our footwork, okay, outside foot up so that we take this one attack step. If he blocked down on a run, he's going to fit right there. When he gets past, now once he gets this pass set, okay, once he feels this pass set, now you see he's stuck his foot, now he's pressing vertical through the B, and he knows he's going to cycle back underneath him. And then you see a good job by our sink it. We've watched a few of these clips, but you'll see the sink it movement, cross and face here, coming clean, right into the lap of the QB. Okay, here's another one. Same thing here, we got a wheelie off this left side, you'll see 51. And here you see that our DN here, 69, does a little quicker, a little better job of snapping back inside, adds right into the run fit. And then we've got our, we've got our sink it going off on this side. And 95 coming down, collision, nose is clean. So really in all of those things, when we look at it, it's know your AAT, we're balancing it up on each side, but, but really what I want to look at is how we can take just our base stunt that we're going to run when we just bring one outside backer or one inside backer, and we combine them in terminology that the kids can understand, and now we've brought a five-man pressure. So just kind of four examples of four stunts and, and four combination pressures that we built into into our base stunts that we run off a daily basis. And again, you can do what you want. Certain alignments, you're gonna change the front. How do you wanna dictate um, based upon what you're seeing? If they're protecting to a three shade, that's where we're gonna get in and we might run a cuff. You saw scuff is a good one for that because on the one side, we're gonna run a, a cuff by the inside backer. So we're putting that DN into a three tech, trying to force that O line, set the protection that way then on the opposite side, we're running a sink it. We're getting that slide away from us, which should open up for that twist game by that D end and that nose. So again, our buzzwords, AAT, alignment assignment technique, um, and really what we go for. And then obviously, coaches, you had said, if anybody's got questions and contact stuff, I just put it at the end here. But um, that's really what I want to go through, um, talk about that and, and obviously if there's questions we can go back and, and look at a couple things here We've got a few minutes left but um, really can open it up to any questions that people have